A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terabith of Mamre as he sat in the entrance of his tent while the day was growing hot. Looking up, Abraham saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought that you may bathe your feet and then rest yourself under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food that you may refresh yourselves and afterward you may go on your way. The men replied, very well, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, quick, three measures of fine flour, knead it and make rolls. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender choice steer and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk as well as the steer that had been prepared and set these before the three men and he waited on them under the tree while they ate. They asked Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? He replied, there in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will then have a son. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, 
Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister, in accordance with God's stewardship given to me, to bring to completion for you the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past. But now it has been manifested to his holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory. It is he who we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm my uh, only child that lives in town with my parents. Uh, they live down the street in Olive Branch. They're very close, about 20 minutes away. Uh, my siblings both are off in Texas, so uh, as you can imagine, I get the bulk of kind of going to the house, which is just fine. Uh, I'm trying to follow that commandment to honor your mother and your father. Uh, at least it's held against me someday when I check out of this life. Uh, but there's a certain kind of practice my mother's had uh, in the 30 years that I've been living in Memphis after my time away in education. Uh, and it has to do around the holiday seasons or special occasions, birthdays, or my birthday, their birthdays, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter. She'll call and say, well, this is what the menu's going to be, you know. And of course, I would imagine many of us, we have standard kind of food items, uh, depending on what the celebration will be. Uh, typically at Thanksgiving, my father usually fries a turkey, for example, things of this nature. Uh, so many different items. Uh, and so that always goes on. Here's the menu. What do you think? Sounds great, mom. 
I'm not bringing anything, so, you know, but it's around a meal. And we all have these wonderful experiences about gathering with our loved ones, uh, with our spouses, perhaps our children, grandchildren, extended family, around a table, around a meal. Because it's more than just nourishment, isn't it? There's a greater level of depth of our humanitary humanity that we come in contact with each other, and around that meal we share our very lives. And today, not only in our first reading from Genesis, but obviously in our gospel reading, we're gathered around a meal. The first one was not really expected, quite frankly. Uh, these visitors that came upon Abraham, kind of out of nowhere, but yet he, what, he extends great hospitality to them. And this would be understood in a way that Abraham, and while his wife was in the tent making those cakes or whatever we would like to call them, Abraham is having really an experience of the presence of God in his midst. That's what those three individuals really represent. He did not know them. They had no previous connection. But yet here they are, and they spend time in community together around really a simple mill. And something great and wonderful comes from it. That his wife, who's been considered to be barren, will have a child. In that community, they experience a new life. In our gospel today, we hear that Jesus is traveling to a certain village, and as we see in the scriptures, Jesus begins on a regular basis to actually visit with Martha and Mary, and we don't hear it in the gospel today, but they had a brother. His name is Lazarus. He comes into the gospel of John much later when Martha and Mary sent word that Lazarus, what, had fallen ill and they were concerned, and actually Lazarus died. This is in the Gospel of John. It's one of the great glories of God being revealed in the world. And Martha's like, Jesus, if you would have been here on time, this would not have happened. Kind of heard that already, right? My sister's being lazy. She's not doing anything. Tell her to help me. So we kind of get a glimpse of this personality of Martha. But I want us to also not lose track of the fact that Martha made a great profession of faith when Lazarus was dead. And Jesus says, Martha, don't you know the glory of God is going to be revealed in your brother's death? Yes, I do. God's glory is going to be because of who you are. You are the Son of God. You are the Messiah. And anything you ask of God will be given to you. And it happened, didn't it? Said, Lazarus called forth out of that tomb, untie him, unbind him. This is the same Martha that's in our gospel today of all her food going on. And there's speculation. Maybe she was preparing a larger meal than that was really necessary. I mean, it just sounds like it's just Jesus, Martha, and Mary. How many versions of potato did she have, for example? You know, was it a large meal? And here's Mary, and where is she? Nowhere to be found as far as Martha is concerned. And Jesus gently and gently says, Martha, Martha. Mary's chosen a better role, and she's not going to be deprived of it. She didn't, he didn't say, what you're doing is not important or unacceptable, but what Mary is doing is she's choosing a better reality. And that's what Jesus is always inviting us to do in this world. Because you know, the world is a big menu, isn't it? We always have to make choices. We choose this or we choose that. Or we fail to choose and something happens but it's a big menu. And here Jesus is saying, Mary has made the best choice because what she's doing is remaining in communion with me. That's what she's doing by staying at my feet. And to remember the feet, that's a big deal in Jesus's day. I got a good pair of shoes on. I, I need to replace them soon enough. My feet are never stinky walking through the streets of Memphis for any reason. But Jesus was the one at a meal, his last meal, got up from table, took off his vestments or his garments, put on an apron, and washed the feet of the disciples. Again, in presence at a meal was about being in communion with Jesus no matter what the world was demanding, as Martha kind of represents. And here we are, God's holy family right now, to be in communion with our God through his son, who is about to serve you and I the greatest meal ever. Accepting us, 
whether we're running around like a banshee like Martha or whether we spend a lot of time sitting at his feet, he welcomes us and great things happen. Let us continue to strive to be a person of hospitality like Martha was in this world. It's always very important as Abraham experienced great things, he got his son Isaac. But you and I are called to be people in communion with our God, and we do that through this Eucharist. We not only experience it in this very moment, but we bring it into our world. For God always wants us to be present with his son, to be at his feet, and be in communion with him.